for George's Marcus Ellsworth. Hey. <laughs> And I met a lot of Haitians who weren't getting what they needed, who were getting things they didn't need. Clothes being sent to towns and villages where they didn't need clothes, but those clothes put tailors and seamstresses out of work. Places where foreign aid food, rice and corn and beans were being shipped by the ton, and farmers suddenly couldn't sell their food and just had fields that meant nothing to them all of a sudden. And while I was traveling, I kept meeting so many people who had good intentions. They weren't bad people and they weren't doing bad things, but the things they were doing weren't really helping anybody. About a month of being there, something happened that illustrated this thing I was trying to grasp so clearly for me. The idea of a well-meaning foreigner coming into a country to help and doing the exact opposite. See, me and my friend Jeff, we used to hang out at the end of our day at this little bar slash grocery store called the Savadier Market. Savadier is a little town on the southern side of Haiti. And the woman who owned the place and ran the shop, we were familiar faces. We walked in and she knew that Jeff wanted a beer, and I either wanted rum, or a fruit soda, or a masculine and frisky both. <laughs> and so we sat at our table, and we did what we call our debriefing, which basically meant getting drunk and talking about this. And as we're sitting there, these two white Americans come walking in. The locals call them blanc, which literally means white, but it's really Haitian slang for foreigner, no matter what color you are but we call them RWPs, random white people. Because they tended to move about very disconnected from the people around them and just smiling and wearing their matching missionary church t-shirts, but not really talking to anybody. But these two guys, they see us, they see two Americans, and they immediately strike a conversation. I had developed a certain disdain for other Americans, and I really didn't feel like talking. But they come up to us and sit at our table and they just launch into their conversation and they say, yeah, we're here working with this missionary group and we're, 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 building, we're building a church. We're building a church for the people in this, in this town, in Savadier. What they didn't seem to realize is about half of the folks we met weren't Christian. They only went to the missionaries to get the food and the shelter and the clothing and the medicine they needed. They didn't really care about a church because they didn't have homes. They didn't really care about a church because they didn't have a hospital. They had other needs. But these people were building a church. Yeah. And they talked about how it was so great for the community and, and we asked them, are you hiring any local guys to do work? Because there's a bunch of guys here who do construction. They can't find jobs. And they're like, well, no, we brought our own guys. So the money's not even coming back into the community. And then I asked them, well, what are you going to do next after the church? Is the church like the first step of the rebuilding? Are you helping folks with homes? And they said, no, no, we don't have money for that. Okay. And then as we're sitting there talking, they started to get really uncomfortable, realizing that the things that they were so proud of didn't really mean that much to us or even to the people in the town. And these kids walked in. And the kids knew these guys because they were staying in their neighborhood. And the kid, one of the kids, the oldest of them, about four of them, the oldest walks right up to these two guys, puts his hand out and says, Blanc, Dola, asking him for money outright. And he gives the kids some money. I'm guessing maybe three or four dollars American. In actual American money, not in Haitian goo, not in Haitian cash at all. That three or four dollars might not sound like a whole lot to give a kid here. Three or four dollars American is a lot of money. And so these kids go into the store. And these two guys 
stop paying attention to them, but I, I'm watching them because I'm curious to see what four kids can spend four dollars in America. It would be the equivalent of you handing a child a hundred bucks and saying, go into the candy store. The kids go in, the younger ones scatter to the store and they're chattering away and they're grabbing candy bars and, and sodas and they just, they're, they've been given carte blanche to just run around in the store. Or when it runs, it's losing her mind. Um, the oldest boy stays at the door, though, and he watches the others, and he still has the money. All of it. And I hear him bark something at the kids, and they all stop. And they huddle around him, and there's a quick negotiation that goes on. And then one kid goes back to the cooler, and he pulls out the Haitian equivalent of a 7-Up. Just one. One bottle. And he goes to the counter, and the older kid pays for this one soda. The shop owner damn near empties her till, getting them change. I watch the older kid hand out pocket change to the other three kids, and the rest he puts in his pocket. Meanwhile, the two guys, the two foreigners who are leaving for a flight tomorrow, they keep talking, and they don't see what's going on. I see the resentment in the eyes of the other three kids. I see the greedy self-satisfaction of the older boy. And not five minutes later, the three who got the pocket change come back and look at these two guys and say, Blanc! Dollar? And all I'm thinking is, do you not see? Yes, it's nice to do this thing. It, everyone feels good putting a smile on a child's face, letting them have a little treat, something that they don't normally get to have, but you have no idea what you're doing. You created a mini economy of conflict among these kids who, minutes before, were all getting along and were all agreed on the fact of scamming you out of all your money. But now you've made it something complicated. And they excuse themselves and they leave. The kids, because they're being so persistent, essentially drive them out of the shop. And Jeff looks at me and he says, do you understand what just happened? And I tell him I think I did. Because to me, this is everything that we do as Americans when it comes to foreign aid writ large on the faces of children. All of a sudden, I don't want to finish my run. All of a sudden, I just want to walk back to our friend's house and crash. I don't want to be anywhere where I'm going to run into any other well-meaning Americans. But as we're leaving, there's a line of people walking towards us down the street from the opposite direction. They're all wearing t-shirts just like the two guys that we met a few minutes before. And every single one of them is carrying a Haitian child on their hips. All of these bright, smiling, white, Christian American faces just so happy to be helping these Haitian children. And I hear them talking about what they want to buy the kids, what candy, what soda, what high fructose poison they want to inject into those black bodies before they leave on the lid tomorrow kids who are more than old enough to walk on their own. More than old enough to say, no, this isn't what I need. But it was all they were going to get, so of course they take it. And as we pass this parade of egocentric capitalism, I kept hoping, I kept listening and waiting for just one child, just one to look at their would-be savior, carrying them in their arms, and say, Hey, Blanc, let me walk on my own. That child could have spoken for an entire country. But I didn't hear that. All I heard was the march of well-meaning Americans, while I decided to walk a different way. <laughs>